Hello, welcome Hi. back. Um, we have with us in the studio, Amanda. Yes, <laughs> yes Dr. Bennett Ang and uh, Kwan Wei. Wei. <laughs> yes. Okay, um, we've talked about how Singaporeans have very bad eyesight, but we actually spoke to Singaporeans to yes. find out how bad really their eyesight are. <laughs> so take a look at this eyesight BT. Okay, how bad is your eyesight? About 500 degrees. Do you go to different opticians? Yeah. Have you ever got like a different response or a different advice from different opticians? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Each one will sometimes not accurate. Sometimes I guess they want to make profit. Okay. <laughs> That's bad, no? Yeah. Unprofessional. I think they should have some kind of license or control. You know? okay. I done my LASIK a um, few okay. years ago, yeah. So before that, right, When you did you visit like different opticians or do you stick to one optician? Yeah, normally, yeah, we'll just stick to one, yeah. Have you ever had an experience where, like, opticians have given you different opinions, with different advice about your eyesight? Oh, yeah, 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 of course, yeah. Sometimes, yeah, I mean, before I done the LASIK, they were told me, uh, some would tell me, oh, I have wet eyes, and some, you know, say that my eyes are very dry, you know, that kind of thing, yeah. Okay. <laughs> what, okay, have you ever been to an optician? Yes. Have you visited different opticians and they've told you different things about your eyes? No, I only visited once. Yeah. No, to me it's all the same. As in, I only went to a certain optician. Yeah. So you stick with one optician? Yeah. How bad is your eyesight? Oh, quite bad. Right. Like how? Already 500 degrees. Okay. Do you go to different opticians? Yeah, it tends to because uh, when I move house, I'll change shop. So Must go for me. Do you get different opinions from like different opticians that you visit? Mm. Yeah, because I'm not. Uh, I don't know anything about this. You see, so I tend to listen to whatever they say. But they give you different opinions. Sometimes, yeah. Then you'll be uh, shocked. <laughs> yeah, I cannot do this. Uh. Oh, <laughs> now that I know. <laughs> do you go to different opticians? Uh, no, not really. So always. you stick with one optician? Yes, of course. Okay, has there ever been a case where you've been given different advice by different opticians? Generally, no. So how bad is your eyesight? How bad? It's getting worse, like, actually. Okay. Uh, do you go to different opticians and have you had, like, different advice? Yeah. Like, uh, like some, some say that uh, I shouldn't wear contact lenses because of my eyesight. Some say I should wear it because of my, my eyesight. Because I wear spectacles. Have you ever gotten different advice about your eyesight from different opticians? Uh, yes. Like, what do they tell you? Uh, they think that I need to wear my spectacles. Um, I think when I'm studying and just like that. As in myopia since primary four. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. How bad is it? Like, what degree do you have? Uh, four hundred plus both sides. Have you ever experienced, right, when you visit different opticians, they give you different advice? I only stick to one usually. <laughs> sort of get the sense that um, people generally listen to yeah, their the opticians. opticians. But they, I mean, majority of them said they have like conflicting advice. Mm. No, I have, because I have, um, I used to wear toric lenses. Then subsequently, another optician told me, actually you don't have to because your astigmatism is quite low. So actually, my current prescriptions now, I don't have them. Yeah, yeah. so mm. I think that it's really so, like, about... So like, what is right? And who should yeah. listen to? <laughs> it's really about going to the uh, a qualified optometrist mm. uh, who has actually gone through a formal education in terms of the fitting of a, uh, contact lenses or, or <laughs> spectacles as well. And with regards to uh, astigmatism, it, it really would also depend on your lifestyle needs. Hmm. Very often, hmm. with a certain amount of astigmatism, using a toric contact lenses would definitely improve in terms of the visual, uh, uh, the kind of clarity of vision in the long run, especially if you intend to be reading or, or, or doing a lot of near work for long periods of time, because hmm. ultimately, if the vision is not uh, corrected optimally, that may actually well, cause a certain amount of tiredness in your eyes mm. if, when you actually do a lot of new work activities as well. So mm. all of these factors do actually come into play when in, in deciding uh, what kind of uh, vision corrections that you actually require. Mm. Have you had, have you had, like conflicting? 
uh, advise I think yourself? Maybe it comes to like, uh, yeah, some of them will say you you don't really need to have like the specs with the exact degree Under that you correction. have. Yeah, yeah. Like you need to take 50 off or 100 degrees off or something so you won't feel giddy or something. So is that, <laughs> is that true? Well, um, basically, uh, that point is also rather mm. controversial. You have two schools of thought. Mm. Uh, so basically, there is one school of um, a thought where uh, some people feel that you should prescribe the full degree mm. and it doesn't change your progression of myopia. And another school of thought is that uh, maybe you don't have to have the full correction, maybe 50 degrees, and mm. that may, uh, so that you don't get so adjusted to that oh. full power and so it delays your, your need for uh, mm. further increases in, in spectacles. Uh, but once again, that's also, that's controversial. There's no good scientific evidence to back both of the each up. Uh, but it's a, it's a personal preference. Some uh, doctors do feel, and optometrists do feel that uh, uh, by undercorrecting, uh, it can help. Mm. Uh, but uh, in general, I would say that if you are young, mm -hmm. uh, ultimately the spectacle correction or your contact lens correction should be enough to give the person good enough vision. Mm -hmm. So at least when they are young, their developmental pathways uh, continue to function so they don't end up with something like a lazy eye when the, the nerves never develop fully. Mm -hmm. uh, once they go past the developmental stage at like 12 years of age, mm -hmm. then even if they were to wear undercorrected glasses, uh, they uh, would not have, uh, they, have, they have a very, very low chance of developing a lazy eye. So at that stage, you can undercorrect uh, reasonably safely. Okay? But I think what's most important is that the person does not suffer in school and still can see what he sees. All right? uh, what is learned will not be unlearned, so the person's uh, pathways do develop fully and he can see well mm -hmm. uh, beyond the age of 12 and 15 then uh, he will continue to be able to see well whether or not he's fully corrected or not. So the jury is still out as to whether or not undercorrection help is helpful. Okay. Uh, two schools of thought. Yeah, so basically it's really about prescribing the correct vision corrections to meet the vision needs mm. of this patient because different uh, uh, customers or patients may have different vision needs, okay. different lifestyles. So, so all these does play a part as well. For someone like me and my job <laughs> scope, <laughs> Would I, should I, what? Yeah, like long hours in front of the computer. Not go for toric lenses <laughs> or go for toric lenses? <laughs> I think you need to uh, find the visual correction, whether it's spectacles, contact lenses, mm. uh, or even refractive surgery, I mean, to, to meet your visual needs. If you are happy wearing glasses, uh, that is the safest mm. uh, way of uh, correcting a refractive error. And but not, I'm saying even for glasses, because right now, it's got no aesthetic at all in my glasses. It's not correct. If you can see well. Yeah, I think it's like... <laughs> I couldn't see a difference. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, ultimately, uh, if you are able to function well during your normal activities, uh, then what you're wearing is probably good enough for you. Mm, okay. uh, but of course, uh, if you're having difficulty uh, watching a movie, reading the subtitles, then certainly it could be because your astigmatism is undercorrected or mm, your okay. power is undercorrected. But it's, it's really a lifestyle choice. At your age, you're unlikely to... Um, uh, uh, end up with a lazy eye, for example, you know, mm. because you're not wearing a full correction. But as what he said, uh, certainly it's a lifestyle choice. If you are doing mainly a lot of near work, uh, then you may not need the full correction because uh, most of your activities are in a near environment. Okay. And, mm -hmm. But if you are certainly, if you, are, you become a pilot one day, then certainly you might want to have your full correction. Okay. Um, now we've spoken to some people of what they are, you know, Opticians tell them, but um, what do what are some of the grandmother's <laughs> stories they hear from about, their parents? Yeah, from you know, their parents. What to do and what not to from do. From your parents, from my parents. Yeah. So let's look at some of the myths. Have you ever heard of any eyesight myths? Like you know, when you were young, maybe your parents told you stuff. Oh, this is I think a accepted fact. Not to lie down and read. I got my short sentence through that. Okay, my parents told me that too, but I've been told that's a myth. I, I, no, I know. I think it's because when you you lie, you are straining your eyes. So very fast, within one week, two weeks, you get soft tightness. And the other thing is eat more tomatoes and all the carotene and all this. Vitamin A, very good for eyesight. So do you think it's helped you at all? I think it helped. At least it maintained. Do you know any eyesight myths that maybe when you were young, your parents told you or that you tell your children? Or cannot uh, lie down to read, cannot read in the dark. That's what they told us. I tell the same thing to my children, <laughs> but they still get short-sighted. What, what other myths are there? Uh, not behind the light uh, when they are reading. 
Mm. So how about food that you eat or anything? Food la, veggie, fish. All improved rice. Yeah, meat little la. Nowadays nobody like to eat meat a lot. <laughs> eat food which helps to you know maintain your eyesight. Like have good vitamins, good amount of vitamins. And do you know any fruits? Uh, carrots, spinach. Supposed to be good, yeah. How yeah. about foods that we eat? Do you think of anything that can improve our eyesight? I think vitamin A. Vitamin a. Yeah. Okay. What are some eyesight myths you might have been told, like when you were young? In the sense that uh, um, you get bad eyesight if you do not take care. You know, you lie down to read or whatsoever. Have you ever heard, like, from your parents or maybe your friends, like ways to improve your eyesight or to stop it getting worse? Yes, uh, I I don't know whether it is true or not because my parents often told me, tell me to eat more carrot in order to improve my eyesight. <laughs> Do you think it works? Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> Most common one is uh, eat carrot lah. <laughs> eat carrot. Yeah. Have your parents told you anything? Don't lie down, and watch TV, you know, normal stuff. Try not to read in the dark or something like this. Yeah. How about things that you eat? Mm, carrots. Yeah. Do your parents tell you that? No, it's something like people say when I was younger then I try to just take it as a myth or something like this. But do you eat carrots? Mm, not as often. So it's, it doesn't work with your eyes. Have your parents ever told you things like if you lie down and read, your eyesight is going to go? No, but I read them in news or something. But do you think it works? Um, yes. Do you but lie down and read? Yeah. <laughs>